let's talk about sluttiness. Hello everyone, welcome back to today's podcast. In today's podcast, we are having a conversation around different kinds of sluts. For the sake of this conversation, please be aware that we all live in different bubbles and we all have different ideas of what this means. So I'm gonna explain it, how I understand it, and then we're gonna have a discussion after my monologue where we discuss the layers and differences in sluttiness. Now, before I jump into it, I am drinking a tea. I'm actually finishing, I think this might've been the first tea that I ever featured on the podcast. This is called Wildflower Tea. This is from Woodland Herbal on Etsy. I'm not sponsored by them, I just like their teas. So here's my teapot for today. Cute, 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 cute. Here's my bluish hue tea. I don't, I don't think you guys can see it, but it is a bluish hue. Oh. Mm. I think it might have the ingredients here. Um, butterfly pea, caladilula, calendula, calendula, chamomile, lemon balm, honeysuckle, red clover, uh, chrysanthemum. I know how to wait. Chrysanthemum. Um, uh, cornflower, globe amaranth, lemon verbena, wild bergamot and some oh my gosh that word is so hard to say it's too hard it's too hard to say either which way it's really good oh super delish super delish super what I want okay first and foremost look at my clothes I am dressed in my slutty energy feel okay this is how I feel I'm 33 years old and I'm still dressing like a hoe but what does that mean to dress like a hoe what does it mean to be a slut so I had a conversation the other day with a caller who's in burlesque and I love that. I love burlesque. I have actually been to the finals uh, burlesque competition in New Orleans. I did it like three, four years ago with friends and it was really amazing to see the talent in burlesque. but also um, how comfortable people are with their bodies and also how different the burlesque bubble can be to certain bubbles. Like when I was at the burlesque show, there were definitely people I was listening to around me, like men especially, and there were men who were saying things like, I hope one of their tits falls out or I hope I see a nipple, you know, because burlesque is very like infamous for having like pasties and almost, almost, almost nudity. It's naked, but it's not always naked in the way that maybe you would see at a full nude strip club. I think people have different relationships with it. I also heard people speaking about like body positivity and women empowerment and how good it felt to be doing burlesque or how felt it, how good it felt to have like people's mothers there. There was a woman there who had her mother come from like Texas and I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of layers here. Funny enough, when I heard that this woman's mother was there to see her compete in burlesque, I automatically was like, my mother would never, like I could never ask my parents to come to something like this. My mother hates the fact, my father hates the fact that I even dress like this on the internet. Like I said in my last podcast, every bubble is gonna have a different relationship with modesty and sluttiness. Every now and then, something will incite a debate about modesty in our culture. And this is an important thing because modesty is a good thing. And the reason we know that it's a good thing is because we all hate it when someone acts immodestly around us based on whatever standard of modesty we happen to uphold. We don't like it when others act arrogantly in proximity to ourselves. Nobody likes it when someone excessively boasts or brags or flagrantly tries to capture all the attention to be had for themselves, leaving none for the rest of us. Like for example, nobody likes the person who always has the one-up story. Do you know what I mean by that? Like the person who, when you're in a group of people and you tell a story that you think will be interesting to everybody else and then they jump in right afterwards with something like, oh yeah, well this one time I did something so much cooler than that. So I hope that we can all admit that modesty in, it, in its various forms is something that we can all appreciate as a good that helps society get along. <sighs> yes, we are all sluts. You're a slut. All these dudes behind you are sluts. Your cameraman's a slut. Your PA is a slut. Thank you. And your mic's a slut. And what made you a slut? Because I own my body. My body is not a political playground. It's not a place for legislation. It's mine and it's my future. And How old are you? Grown. 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 And so, 
So you sleep around with a lot of men? No, actually, I'm a virgin. You're a virgin? Yeah. So you're not a slut? Yes, you can be a slut. Because a slut is not what you made it, Jesse. A slut is what I made it. A boss getting money, taking the mic, turning life around, taking over Hollywood. So, so, so you are still a virgin, but yet you call yourself a slut. It wouldn't matter. I'm saying it doesn't matter if I'm a virgin. It doesn't matter what a woman's sexual history is. A slut is just a word that you and your fellow penises made. A slut. Your mama's a slut. Your grandma's a slut. Everybody. Is your mother a slut? No, but yours is. Your mother's not a slut? No. But you said every woman's a slut. Everybody. Well, why your mother is not a slut? You are a slut. Not my mother in particular is not a slut, but a slut is a word for anybody who's owning their sexuality, turning up, and not letting Jesse twist their answers around. <laughs> so let me ask, I noticed you, are you dressed slutty today? No. I'm dressed like a woman. What made you decide to come out looking like this? You look like a slut. What made you do it? You look like a slut. What made you dress? What like made this? you dress like this? No, just answer that question. What made you? Dress like this? I dress like this because I can dress whatever I want to. Period. But what made you dress like this? Let me ask you. Do you Why believe? You put on these striped shirts? Let me ask you. Do you believe in God? Yes, Jesse. I believe what, in God. Would God want you to be a slut? God would want me to be whatever I want to be. Would he want you to be a slut? He would want me to be whatever I want to be. How about a slut? Whatever I want to be. And why would he want you to be a slut? He would want me to be whatever I want to be because God believes in choice. And you should know that, Jesse. That's would why your, you're allowed to wear this lame-ass shirt. Would your parents be happy to know that you're a slut? My parents would be happy to know that I'm a free woman on a billboard in Times Square in Soho for every real because we take back the woman form and we ain't lame dudes like Jesse wearing striped shirts. Right, thank you so much. Modesty is holding reserve that extends to the entire person. Someone who's practicing modesty in dress would not wear extravagant clothing with loud colors, elaborate designs, or expose unnecessary parts of the body. Modesty is a characteristic that is not self-absorbed. Taking countless selfies, spending hours in the mirror just to count your likes and your comments and your views to feel more valued. Rather, it's quiet and meek, yet esteemed. It is not shaped by fashion or culture, but by the Word of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 31, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Immodest dress really affects our society today and I don't think we realize the impact that it has especially on children. And no, I am not oppressed. I've been wearing the hijab, or headscarf, since sixth grade, of my own volition. So for years, I've struggled with divisive stereotypes that threaten my identity as a human being. I was 11 years old when my English teacher pulled me aside during class and said, Atiyah, don't you feel ugly compared to the other girls with that thing on your head? I don't feel ugly. In fact, I feel rather beautiful. Yeah, because I mean, so many of these issues, it's just mm. like, well, that's a male problem. That's a female problem. Yeah, and and I think we're evolving. So like even discussing stuff like male modesty. Well, that, I want to talk about that. Yeah. You know, and it's a puzzling term because like we typically think well, modesty is clothing and yeah. you know, how would I dress if I wanted to seduce? Like, would I be a, <laughs> would, would I be a fireman or like yeah. a cowboy? Or like, like I've people tried just laugh. That, it's like, people just, just laugh yeah, at yeah, me. It's like, what am I, the village people here? You're like, what is going on? Yeah, I want to talk about this because I feel like there's kind of two pitfalls you can fall into. One, the idea that only women ought to be concerned about modesty and then the other that we're exactly the same and therefore modesty has to be exactly the same with with each yeah um thomas aquinas talks about modesty in the summa and he, he he talks about it sort of like um almost like an arrogance in outward appearance and and action mm -hmm. you know so um if you were going to a soup kitchen and you got all dressed up and bling bling and yeah, looking yeah. good and f you yeah. know, that's kind of immodest yeah you know? yeah but let's let's talk about that what does modesty mean yeah, well, um, modesty is a proper attitude towards greatness of humility. And so it's the, the greatness of the body it is, you know, mm. what modesty is sent, I think of it as an invitation to contemplation. So it's a, a woman, at least when we're talking about feminine modesty, is inviting a man to realize there's a lot more about her than just her body. Because her sexual value is great and it's wonderful, but it's not the best thing about her. But because it's so intoxicating, if we see just a little bit too much of it, it can so easily obscure the value of the entire person. And so the virtue of chastity and modesty, one of the things it does is try to order our human values. So yes, your, your sexual value is good, it's great. 
but your value as a human person is a greater good. And what lust is, is when the sexual value of the person supersedes their personal value. That's the best thing you have to offer, your sensual value. And so modesty helps to put these things in proper order. And so it's not saying the body's bad. And I, I try to point out to women that a lot of girls get a little ticked off when you talk about modesty. Yeah. Like, well, if a guy has a bad imagination, that's his problem. And, and I, I understand where they're coming from because like literally for thousands of years, the whole problem of lust has been blamed on the woman, the body huh. of the woman. It's your outfit. You're the woman caught in adultery. You're the seductress. But you really think it through the... What's the cause of robbery? Is the cause of robbery the presence of jewelry in the window of the store or the presence of greed in the heart of the robber? Oh, gosh, you know. That's fantastic. And so, what a great line. Jewelry doesn't cause robbery. You know, beauty doesn't cause lust. The real, the body's not the problem. The body's the answer. The body's the solution. And so long as we blame the body as the problem, we're missing where the real issue is, which is mm -hmm. the brokenness in my human heart that I don't even know how to look at a human body mm -hmm. without nothing but lustful thoughts. And so what modesty does is John Paul II said that in order for women to understand modesty, they need insight into male psychology of just understanding how easily, you know, a man can start thinking sensual thoughts if he sees a little too much. And so what modesty does, it kind of meets him in that weakness and helps him to right, elevate. Right, because we are our brother's keeper. Yeah. That's yeah. the answer to what Cain, right? Yeah. yes, yes, yeah. you are your brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and strictly speaking, no, you can't cause somebody to sin because that needs to be an act of the mm -hmm. will, mm -hmm. but you can certainly lead them to virtue, you know, by the way that you dress, you're speaking a message. And so it's, it, modesty is, 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 I think it helps a woman find the love that she really deserves. It's so, not about your body's bad. So <clears throat> I was thinking about sluttiness and I was thinking about the hierarchy of sluttiness. In sex worker circles, we know that in our industries, Obviously, there's a hierarchy. A little competition thing with my wife-in-laws, but it was not bad. You know, it was like kind of healthy. Built your character, you know, and who's going to get the rawest outfit? But he made sure that we all were treated equal. And um, one thing Kenny Red never did, like pimps do, they put all their holes together trying to save money and stuff like that. Not Kenny Red. Not Kenny Red. He have us all in different hotels, you know? Like, he don't like all that. You know, and he would just be bouncing around from different cities. I may be in Hawaii. I may have a wife-in-law in Vegas. And I might have a wife-in-law in Miami, a wife-in-law in California. You know, Kenny Red had like his first string, his second string. And then he had the third string, which was the dookie booties. But, you know, he still made them feel good about home. And they, they, weren't, they weren't really no lookers, you know. But I was also, you know, I was all, uh, definitely on the first string. I was a starter. But um, I never warmed the bench, <laughs> just to let you know that. So when I think about hierarchies, I think about this idea that there's one way to do something. And you guys know in the last podcast, I said that basically a bubble is formed the moment you say things have to be X way. That's the bubble. The bubble is the belief system, the ideology, the even reality that some of us believe in, participate in, or know that no could exist or ha be like something that's factual, right? So when you're having a relationship with the bubble, you're not only fighting like the person that you are within yourself for, you know, maybe um, maybe you shame yourself or make yourself feel guilty for the way that you're dressed. Maybe I could sit here and internalize like, oh my gosh, I was, go I was born in a good Catholic family. I should be, you know, holding my body with dignity. I shouldn't be sledding around. I should be wearing modest clothes. But I, Brittany, don't really care about slutty clothes like I actually don't have any problem with how I'm dressed maybe if I was around a child or maybe if I was around like an elderly person that wanted some sort of like modesty maybe we could have that conversation because I am consent based so obviously I want to have consent conversations about how we want to appear in front of one another but I Brittany wouldn't mind uh depending on the context of course someone dressing like this or let, hell I, don't, I wouldn't even mind technically if somebody was naked so that's the first battle then the second battle is well, I, Brittany, might not mind, but what if somebody in my bubble or in my sphere does mind? How do I have a conversation with them or a relationship with them that allows me to have bodily autonomy and agency over my form and a cohesive and peaceful relationship with my existence, people outside of myself, right? Well, this, I think, is really difficult without the nuance, without openness in relation to hierarchies. So in sex worker bubbles, there is a difference between stripping it depends if you're stripping at night or midday. There's a difference between people who get fully naked when they strip and people who do partial stripping. There's a difference between full service sex work and people who do OnlyFans. There's a difference, there's a difference, there's a difference. That difference 
is where the hierarchy is created because the moment a human knows they're different from someone else, it allows them an opportunity to use that difference as a way to get the upper, like the, the upper ground, the high ground, like the moral superiority feeling that you want to feel. The reason I think we want to feel this, though, is just because we want to know that we have the answers. So you'll see some people like yesterday during the live stream, we covered pimping and pimp uh, bubbles. And the woman and the man in there was talking about how pimping's great, being a hoe is great, being a bitch is great. And at the same time, there was a clear hierarchy between like the uh, like the really great bitches and the low level bitches. And that within of itself is a hierarchy. So it doesn't matter if something is cool. You can say all skateboarding is cool. But there is a difference between somebody who just rides their board and somebody who's fucking grinding rails. So at the end of the day, one isn't more skateboarding than the other. But one is more, I, I am a skater than person who rides skateboard. Like you might have a different, like I have a skateboard. I've had a skateboard my whole life. Kara Beth Burnside, pro skater, taught me how to drop into half pipes, which sounds crazy because you're like, what kind of, what, what? I just went to a girls event that was for skateboarding. And then I met this pro skater. Then I learned how to skateboard. Then I won my first skateboard from Radio Disney. Then I have a skateboard right now that I keep. And I have all these skateboards in my house. Am I a skateboarder or am I a person who rides skateboards? I think when you're in a bubble and you're in a culture and you're in a bubble, like you're in a group, it's hard not to automatically be like, yeah, but you're not like me because it's really what we're all trying to do. So when you look at sluts and you say, yeah, but you're not like me, you are in some ways just protecting your own sanity so you can confirm you understand reality. And then in some ways it might be a cope and a sort of like meanness towards another person as if to say, I'm better than you because I don't do these things even though I want to. So I'm going to use examples of Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, one of my two favorite examples to use throughout the last decade I've been on YouTube for this subject matter. Beyonce, Rihanna, Cardi B. So on a spectrum, there's Beyonce, Britney Spears, Beyonce and Britney Spears, Christina and Rihanna, Cardi B. Now, before the podcast continues, do you guys want to leave a comment in the sections down below of what you think the differences between them might be? The reason I ask you this is because in preparation for this podcast, I went around asking my brothers, like, hey, what's the difference between Beyonce and Cardi B? And everyone had different answers. Hey, I went to my friends. What's the difference between Cardi B and Beyonce? Everyone will have an idea of what they think I'm going to think. But I want to know what you think the difference is. So on a spectrum, Britney Spears and Beyonce are good girls that use their sexuality and the objectification of their form to push their careers forward while still maintaining that they're mothers and good girls and aren't like those hoes over there. Those hoes over there would be more like the Cardi B's, but that's the other side of the spectrum. And we saw in the past when Cardi B and Nikki were battling and Cardi threw the shoe at Nikki, Nikki was ashamed because she was at this nice event with rich people and she was afraid that Cardi was too low class. This is rooted in like classism and colorism as well as like just um, sort of like what looking like a top dog might appear like in America. So Nikki might be trying to appeal to the white audience, which she's really good at doing. Nikki is really mainstream accepted. She loves being on Colbert. So does Cardi to an extent, but Cardi is selling. I'm the girl who also made money, but she's not selling class. Nikki is selling being a bad bitch and a classy bitch, but not really appealing as massively as a Beyonce who obviously is appearing to appeal to the classy people, whatever that means, and America could be associated with race, could not, maybe associated with just economics. It's a little convoluted in America to try to figure out these bubbles because they overlay so much. So Beyonce is trying to push the narrative that you can be like sort of like in your body, make music for women, be sexual enough to attract a man, like a Jay-Z who's like a top dog, right? But at the same time, most of America is still having a hard time accepting Beyonce, which I feel like is, you know, expressed in her own music. I think she struggles like when she was featured with the Dixie Chicks at the Music Awards for the Country Music Awards. I love country music. I love the Dixie Chicks. I love country in general. And I love Beyonce's country. I need a whole Beyonce country album. Please, 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 please make this happen. I love her country. Like, I love when she does country. Beyonce got like canceled. Everyone was really upset. Everyone's saying, why is Beyonce at the Country Music Awards? She's not, she doesn't do country music, but Beyonce does country music, if you listen to her music. But also, I understand that she doesn't primarily do country music, but neither do other stars who were featured at the Country Music Awards. That's like what was 
debunkable about the whole controversy. I showed Beyonce to even people in my own family and they were like, she doesn't belong here. And I was like, even the Middle Easterns are impacted by this bullshit that Beyonce isn't supposed to be doing country. Like, it's so strange how like being black can alienate you from even being considered in certain bubbles, which is just reality. The reality is as women, as men, as certain types of people, we are automatically dis, just dis, uh, not what's it called? Just Dis disregarded as a possibility of being in. Now, Christina Aguilera tried to own her sexuality and be the bad slutty girl. And it didn't quite work. People thought she was too edgy, not cute enough, wasn't the girl next door anymore. She was part of the Disney music, uh, Mickey Mouse's Disney Club, growing up with Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears. But Britney and Justin went wholesome, like, oh, we're like accepted by the masses branding. And Christina tried to go rebellious. And she still is ostracized for the mainstream. I was allowed to listen to Britney and Beyonce and like uh, Christina. I was allowed to listen to all these women, but my mom made it clear that all of them were heathenistic, slutty girls who shouldn't use their bodies when they have beautiful voices. They should be using their voices to glorify God. And so I started to in internalize sort of like this relationship with my sluttiness, my body. What does it mean? I was like a virgin till 22. I didn't even really kiss anyone until then. I mean, of course I had like high school boyfriends, girlfriends where we like kiss, like peck on the cheek, but I didn't really do much, not even oral sex until I was like 22. So um, that's just like a lot, right? It's like a big change compared to other people who have relationships with their bodies. Like I had a more conservative relationship with mine, but then once I had access to being myself, I still, to this day, a decade later, am on OnlyFans and posting a nude for free. I like, I like being naked. I like being sexual. I like being in my energy. But is that because I'm gay? Like, that's the thing. Is my sexual allowance there because I'm in a queer community bubble? Beyonce is not. Britney Spears is not. Christina is not. Like, they might have gay fans. Gay men, gay queer people might love these people. But do they, are they allowed in their bubbles to actually be revealing yes and no yes and no depending on the bubble Britney Spears and Beyonce were both known to have mothers who helped dress them for their shoots they would that would then insinuate that their mothers are more than okay with their daughters being slutty which would then sort of add the approval of the bubble but since Beyonce and Britney Spears are trying to appeal to the masses it's much harder to do that and so you have to be more packaged which Beyonce has pretty much almost completely accomplished but her and Britney both lose leeway with different bubbles at different times. Britney, because she's mentally ill, loses that leeway of being like a good girl next door. Now she's like used up goods. Sorry. Not to me, to the bubbles. Then there's the bubble that looks at Beyonce and says, no matter how pretty you are, no matter how well you speak, you'll always be black. Which sounds like super racist because it is fundamentally a part of the black rejection of black women. Sorry, the black, no, the white, no. The, it is a part of the rejecting of blackness from the non-blacks and in America is harder because skin color is also associated with class in America not just your money you could have a poor white family that is considered more dignified in the eyes of a bubble than a poor black family depending on the bubble that's observing you right I don't think it's black and white all white Americans see all black people this way all black Americans see all white people this way I don't think it's like that no one's a monolith that much but I think there's a relationship our bubbles are all having, right? They say that black women, black girls, sorry, get sexualized younger. Black boys get um, aged up faster and treated as men before they've even reached puberty. So we know these things are happening, but why? Well, there's the bubble, the history, racism, colonization, buzzword here, buzzword here, buzzword here. Ultimately, it's our relationship with our own agency as people. I think it's more fundamental than even the politics and the bubbles. Because even like being anti-black is part of a bubble that even thought we should be anti-black in the first place, which is so strange. And then anti-sluttiness comes from bubbles that span all different cultures that again come from the bubbles understanding of the construct they've created to have a relationship with our bodies. So we create these constructs that have relationships with our bodies, whether it's through the political lens of your skin color or the political lens of how you keep your form, whether it's fat, skinny, or slutty, or modest. And we shame, 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 no matter who we fucking are. It doesn't matter if you're like Ben Shapiro's sister, whose name I always forget. Hello, beautiful ladies, and welcome to today's video, where we're going to be talking about modesty, 
why it's important, and why it doesn't mean looking like garbage. Who's telling women to be more modest? It doesn't matter if you're a feminist who's super naked and telling everyone you should be slutty, you should be poly, you should be naked. The moment you decide someone should be something because you've decided it, it's wrong, right? Like you've ruined everything. Now you're projecting your morals and ideas onto us and even black bubbles, even minority bubbles, even queer bubbles, even feminist bubbles, even progressive bubbles, fall into this trap. You, are, you cannot escape it. If you are part of a group and a collective, you cannot escape the group shame around your body. So how do you have a relationship question with yourself in relation to your body and then yourself in relation to your bubble? You have to decide which is which and where do you primarily exist? So I, Brittany, primarily exist in the bubble I've created in my home, which is the cultural bubble I've allowed to flourish in my own space, right? Nude art, 18 plus super slutty I you know modest myself around children because it's appropriate I try not to again try to take into consideration people's consent while taking into consideration my own freedom right when we're having these conversations out loud we have to be willing to say my bubble is queer and powerful and lovely but also fucks me over I'm Middle Eastern. That bubble is amazing and beautiful but also fucks me over I asked my mom to find me a nice Chaldean man and she goes, honestly, Betsy, there's not going to be one that isn't going to be religious and isn't going to hate your presence on the internet. And that's probably true. And so when my community looks at me and goes, why are you dating somebody who's not Chaldean? I have to look at them and say, why are, you, why are we as a community not interested in our own women, our own men? Because we are not what we need. We are not obligated, because we're humans, to end up with people that look like us. We're also obligated I think by our own value system to be true to ourselves at least that's how I feel I feel very in conflict with myself when I want to do something and the world's like no because I'm like well fuck I want to do it though I want to dress like this and I want people to just like either don't watch or be okay with it or just like move past it but people feel a need to email me message me which by the way if you email me you must know you're gonna get ignored it's so rude I'm not gonna answer your emails of you lecturing me for 10 pages about how I dress like that's not interesting to me it's fine if you write it I'll just block you and put you in the spam folder it doesn't matter to me too much but I'm letting you know in case you want to double double you know consider reconsider sending that email in the first place but I'm used to it I'm used to the world telling me how to be I'm used to people shaming me for my choices hold on here <clears throat> I'm used to everyone giving me input about what I should do with my life. So the message that I want to send out to you guys is that it doesn't matter what bubble you're born into. What matters is how you exist in that bubble. So with this hierarchy that exists throughout every group and every bubble, even Catholics will talk about, ooh, lukewarm Catholics, lukewarm Christians, real Catholics, real Christians. Like this is a very like in religious bubbles. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. You know when you meet someone, you're like, oh, you're like a lukewarm you all know what that means, right? You're a lukewarm. But it only means it if you're in the bubble. You, under, you understand like the guttural response you feel when you say that. Like, ooh, you're a lukewarm. You know, it's different than somebody who's a secularist who's like, oh, thank God, they're getting less into their religion. They see it as a positive. Like the atheist might say, oh, thank God, they're a little less religious today. But the religious person's like, ooh, you're a little lukewarm today. You're more lukewarm today. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, you're a little slutty today. Even a dress that I can wear from head to toe that covers, if it clings to my body and shows my figure, my mother is always like, Betty, that's too revealing. I understand why certain religious communities like Muslims have like modesty clothes or like Mormons have modesty clothes or Christians or Catholics, they have like the long skirts. I understand as a little girl who had a kind of a woman-y figure, um, young, big boobs young like my bestie has like no boobs and I have boobs and every time growing up that I wear a tank top and she would wear a tank top like people didn't notice when she was wearing one but they shamed me for wearing one Brittany your boobs are too big they're showing too much you're trying to show them off it's like yeah even as a kid I definitely was trying to show off my boobs but to other kids obviously and like like the adults getting involved was just ruining like the courtship between me and kids but that was the problem is like as an 8 9 10 11 12 year old as I was coming into my body and learning about it of course I was flirting with boys my age or girls my age like of course I was and it only became weird and scandalous and scary when adults would make a big deal out of it like don't be alone with a boy don't dress a certain way don't 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 I'm hearing a lot of don'ts what can I do what is allowed is the question so 
when we ask ourselves, what kind of a slut do I want to be? Do I want to bur- be a burlesque slut? Do I want to be a girl who just wears bikinis? Because that's a form of sluttiness in certain bubbles, right? Do I want to be a girl that wears like mini skirts? Oh my gosh. Um, do I want to be a girl that like when I have a top, I unbutton it, the first like six buttons? All of these things are like conversations someone might have with themselves. So, like you might say hearing this, oh, that's silly. Why are people even having this stressful conversation with themselves? Because we're born into bubbles and we interact with our own values and we're trying to find a relationship with balancing those two things. So when I think about the hierarchy of sluttiness in my own head, independence to lack of independence is how I rate it. So if you have, like we talked about the pimp stuff yesterday, I put them in the lowest form of hierarchy because they are not, they're the least independent. The more independent you can be is the more like what I probably will like about your job. So I'm less likely to date a stripper and an escort over an OnlyFans model or a um, traditional porn actress or actor. Because I think about how often are you out of the house? Where are you going? When will you be back? How safe can you be? Um, Well, I'm really like needy. So I kind of want my partner to work from home. So it'd be easier if you could work from home rather than like leaving the house to go to work. Like I have a lot of things that I'd like that could be about the sex work itself or could just be about what comes, what baggage comes with the specific kind of sex work. So you have very, I dated a girl who's a porn actress and um, I had to get like whole panels done to even maybe have sex with her, which we never even did. But when we were dating, because it was long distance, I remember I had to go get tested and I had to do tests that even the doctor was like, why are you getting this tested? And it's because she said she needed it for her work. Now, I don't know if her business was different. I just believed her and I got a bunch of testing done. It cost me like $2,000 to get everything done. A whole workup panel, right? For Again, things I didn't even know I needed testing for. We didn't end up having sex, so no big deal, but it was kind of a cool experience to be like, oh, there's like different bubbles in which even different kinds of sex workers require different kinds of safety protocol, right? So that's a different bubble. Do I want to deal with that every day? Now, when I think about sluttiness, I think it all at the end of the day is equal, but differently experienced. So I don't think any less of like the cam model than I do like a stripper or I don't think anything more of an OnlyFans girl over an escort. I'm just like, yep, all sex work, all the same. How you navigate yourself in those bubbles matters to me. I'm on a roll here. In some bubbles, obviously, someone would say, even if you wear a bikini once, you're too slutty for me and I don't want to date you. Right? That's like a, that's a, That's so far away from my reality, but also very much where I was born. I was born into a bubble where my best friend wore bikinis and I wore one pieces with shorts and my friend at the time, I've known her since she was nine, we're now in our thirties. Like my mom and my parents had the conversation with her about like, hey, don't you feel uncomfortable wearing a bikini in front of your father? And I know in a lot of bubbles, they'll say, um, people who are afraid to wear bikinis in front of their brothers or fathers Uh, obviously think like there's something sexual that could occur. And then some people would say, um, no, it's just like out of respect to them, you know, you like cover up a little bit. I think it's all of it. So I think in some circumstances, you might have a family that doesn't want you to wear bikinis around your brothers or fathers because there have been trauma, there has been issues in the past, and so maybe they're learning from their lived experience. Then there could be another bubble where, yeah, in their bubble, if their dad didn't want to see them in a bikini, it'd be super weird. So like wear the bikini because otherwise it'd be weird. Like now you're making it weird by putting the rule in place because it was never an issue to begin with. Then there's the bubbles where it's somewhere in the middle. I wear a bikini around my friend's dads, but I don't, I dial down my sexy. So if I'm in a, if I'm in a revealing out, outfit in front of outfit in front of somebody who isn't allowed to even think of me sexually that sounds like weird but you know what I mean I dial down my sexuality but if I'm around people that I'm indifferent to them feeling my flirty energy I'll bring it out now this might not make sense to people who don't have flirty energy but I have extremely flirty energy it can actually like really toe the line of what's appropriate sometimes because I'm not gonna lie like I, I kind of bring it out for a lot of people and sometimes even like people I've dated like their dads. I'll be like, wow, maybe I should have gone for the dad as like a joke. And some of the dads have thought it was funny. Some of the moms thought it was funny and it was appropriate. 
other people I've dated, I would never say that to their parents. I would die if someone said that to my parents. Don't ever come to my fucking parents' house and like flirt with my mother. It is so unnecessary. We are not that kind of bubble. It's super offensive. But some bubbles, if you don't flirt with them, they're like offended. Like, oh my God, if your mom was 20 years younger, and it's like, oh my God, stop it. Okay, know your bubble and know how you're going to appear. So you know how you look at the red pill people? fresh and fit and they have all those girls on all of those girls would be disqualified from my religious bubble because they're all hoes they all dress like sluts like literally all slutty melina like destiny's melina is a slutty girl on twitch like i love melina i see melina as a very conservative slutty girl but she is slutty because like her shtick online is to be a hot girl on twitch and she writes things like i wish you were here missing you those are all like a branding tools to say I'm a sexual object I am looking to create a sexual sort of parasocial oh I miss you energy with my audience which is sexy and great and I'm here for it I love it so much it's like awesome I fucking love it but some people wouldn't want to date Melina because she's out there like that even though Melina isn't really out there like that though she has an open relationship so people think she's out there like that but the thing is, it's not the same. When I was in poly circles, was, when I was in an open relationship, people called me like a prude because I wasn't sleeping with everyone. Because I don't like a lot of people. I don't like a lot of you bitches. So I was pretty picky. The other day, my partner asked me what my body count was. And I was like, um, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Because I've had so many moments in my life where I've explored like with vibrators, with random girls that I never had to get naked with. Does that mean we had sex? Or does that mean that I just used a vibrator on her? Right? So what does it mean to have sex? If you if you count it as like you were both naked and inside of each other, I've had like eight partners. If you count it as you were in any way more than platonic, then I've had 30, 40, 50? I don't know. Like, what are we counting? Like, what are we counting? It probably isn't that high of a number, by the way, because if you're counting, if you go to the BDSM dungeon and there's like a 40 person cuddle pile and you're on one part of the cuddle pile, does that mean you had stuff with all of those people? No, it probably just means like you interacted with these people on this side of the cuddle pile. But like, does that mean it was like those people? Well, what if one person was only touching my boob? It's too confusing. You can't have these black and white conversations with somebody like me who has all of this weird, like, I don't know what's considered inappropriate. I don't know what's considered sexy. I don't know what's considered slutty because it's all just like consenting adults doing consenting things. So that's another thing. When I look at my friends, like some of my friends have had over like 100 partners. I don't always think of them as slutty. Sometimes I just look at them as like, yeah, you met 100 cool people that you wanted to connect with. It feels less slutty, but it is still slutty because they own their energy of sluttiness. I have friends that are virgins who are so slutty. So slutty. And they're slutty because their energy is slutty. You feel? Britney Spears sold the brand, the, the image of being a good girl. Remember how her virginity was such a scandal with Justin Timberlake as it was? Which is so cringe. But... Britney sold that until she couldn't maintain it anymore, until she married Kevin Federline, and then people realized, like, ooh, she's kind of willing to date pretty low, so that doesn't make her a high-value girl next door anymore because she couldn't sell herself as that anymore because it didn't fit the brand. Beyonce, some could argue, never even had a chance at that brand, even though she should have had the same chance because she's been with Jay for so long that she really is that story, but because... Because America has problems with black people. It's like harder for black women to sell the image of being a good girl. Even um, Hallie right now, who's doing Little Mermaid, who I think is like a total like in her agency, like in her sluttiness, like in her girl boss energy, is not going to be seen by some people as like good enough to be the Little Mermaid. Even though Little Mermaid be half naked and flirting with men she just met and never talked to. She is also like this really amazing like artist with her sister Chloe and she has this imagery that they purposely orchestrated to tell the world they grew up. So Hallie and Chloe started on YouTube as like really cute innocent girls. But they didn't stop there. They literally put out music to make it clear to people that they had grown up and they have woman bodies now. Even though they're still kind of kids. They have like women bodies now. And I'm really happy for them and I want them to have this. 
But again, you're deviating. In order for women to hold agency, they feel slutty. I don't know why it works that way, but it kind of does. Like agency over your body, whether it's abortion rights, the right to not shave our armpits. Like, do you notice that women, in order to feel powerful, we usually try to do something with our bodies? Whether it's, again, maybe you're a conservative kind of feministy woman. So you're like, I'm going to like be modest and that's my rebellion. Maybe you're somebody who's like, I'm going to be slutty and that's my rebellion. Maybe you're somebody who's like, I'm going to cut my hair short and that's my rebellion. My rebellion is that I'm actually going to be hyper femme and still feminist and that's my rebellion. Everyone's got an idea of their own rebellion. So when you're looking at yours and examining it, I think it is okay to shoot for your rebellion and then to land somewhere. So I shot for my rebellion, super slutty, super fun, like crazy outfits, lots of makeup. Then I settle down into no makeup really except my eyes um but the sluttiness stayed because i like expressing myself in this way now y'all know i've been basically incel for three years i haven't kissed or like, done anything intimate with anyone in three years and now that i'm courting somebody it's like that's a whole new process of like wow possibilities but i still considered myself a slut the last three years even though everyone around me was like Brittany, you're not even getting laid you're not even seeing anyone but i like being in my sluttiness like I like the way I do it I feel like it's consenting and it's it's um about me it's about posing on OnlyFans I know it could like really scar my brothers or father or mother or sister to have to like google me and see me naked or my you know my butt hanging out or a butt plug inside me or a vibrator like I get it super uncomfortable but but this is how Britney wants to be happy is to be in her sluttiness so even though everyone wants to brand me differently and say, Brittany, no, 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 you're not slutty anymore. You haven't even slept around for three years. It's like, okay, when I say in my sluttiness, I mean, I want to feel sexy. So it brings me to the last part of this conversation I've been having with myself. <sighs> sluttiness, feeling sexy. So when I see Beyonce or I see Nikki or I see Rihanna, ooh, Rihanna, the rebellious slut queen of them all, I want to be Rihanna. So Rihanna is the the goal because Rihanna does something that all of these girls don't do she hardly caters she did in the beginning in the beginning Rihanna did copy paste a lot of Beyonce stuff in order to become famous enough in the states enough to move her career forward she did conform 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 she had like umbrella Ella like you know S&M like whips and chains like all of the music she's done has been like very orchestrated for the masses even though they've been other um in some ways like the S&M stuff but now Rihanna is truly being Riri. She's just doing her own thing. Her lingerie line has been amazing. Her even getting pregnant and, and, and together and like doing her own thing. It's like her own thing. I feel like Rihanna is really just doing it because she wants to. And I don't get that energy from Nikki or Beyonce or Cardi. I feel like those three women and even Britney Spears with her trying to be all like in her body and holding her agency feels a little too mentally ill for me. Um, and then Christina just feels like she's in denial. But all of them feel like they still have issues around being slutty, except Rihanna. Rihanna, I feel like, doesn't even look at it as, like, being slutty so much as being empowered. Now, fake empowerment versus real empowerment. Why are you doing it? I think Rihanna makes her lingerie because she thinks she looks sexy. She dances the way she does because she feels sexy. She does bitch better have my money because she feels sexy. I think everyone else feels sexy, but is also always waiting for the approval of other people to confirm they're sexy, even Beyonce, which is sort of a crazy like thing to say out loud. But there's something about when B does her performances where I feel like she's still waiting for the masses to approve of her. Now, is it white bubbles to approve of her? Is it like girl next door bubbles to approve of her? Is it like, what is it? What is it? I'm not sure. But it's something. I feel a, a, a something. Now, I used to have this. To some extent, I have it with certain people. I do want to feel validated by my partner, by um, the other people who believe like I do. Like I want to say, yeah, we've like we're not trying to like get a like a circle jerk going, but we are trying to confirm that we agree. Like bodies are beautiful. I have the right to be slutty. It's not going to make me different because I've had ten partners or a hundred partners. I want to be in a group of people that agree because I actually do do believe this. So when you're owning your sexuality sexuality or body like Rihanna, you're going to have a different way of presenting that energy. Rihanna, I feel like, goes into a room and just says, I'm Rihanna. Beyonce comes into a room and it's like, I am Beyonce. 
But it's also, she is on a much different um, responsibility pedestal. Beyonce is meant to represent black women and black culture, which I think is so unfair to Beyonce. But it's also, I think, something she would like. She would like to be a thought leader, a person who's like important, right? So I think she doesn't mind that. But that puts a lot of pressure on her to not be as authentic as she could be. Rihanna obviously doesn't want to be your fucking mom or your teacher or your philosophy or nothing, nothing, nothing. She just wants to be herself. So she has less of the responsibility from the bubbles perspective. This is a really hard conversation to have, P.S., because there's so many bubbles overlapping. The classism bubble, the race bubble, the fucking, like all these, but the women bubble, the man bubble, the black man bubble, the white girl bubble, like all of these bubbles are a lot to like, so when you're having this conversation with yourself, be forgiving, be patient. When you're asking yourself, am I just slutty because I'm being rebellious? Okay, I'll give you an example of when I was slutty and rebellious and it was obviously for show. I just came across the photo that I did and I'm not going to pose it because it's super fucked up. I did this photo shoot in my 20s about the gay bar that got shot up. Remember the shooting that happened at the gay bar? So I did this like photo shoot where I was naked and I wrote all the names of the victims on my body in different colors and then I took a photo I edited it I thought it looked super dope I was like this is fucking fire this is like meaningful this is like doing something but obviously in my head subconsciously I think I knew it was stupid but I think I was angry that it happened at a gay club I think I was angry I felt really trapped by the world at the time and I remember thinking like I'm going to like stick it to the man. But it didn't even make sense because in hindsight, how is getting naked and writing dead people's names on your body sticking it to the man? It's not. It's like really stupid. But in the moment, it felt really, really good. But I think even subconsciously, it didn't make me feel as good as I thought it would because it wasn't good. It was stupid. But now, in hindsight, I needed that moment. And even though people were telling me, like, Brittany, don't you think this is disrespectful? Brittany, don't you think this is, like, super crass, super crude? And I was like, no, it's good, and it means something. Does it mean something? It probably means I'm a mess. And it did. It meant that I was a mess and not thoughtful, and I didn't consider how this would impact people. So moving forward, it's not that I can – I don't want to compare it, right? Like, I don't want to say that you can never do something like this ever. But in the context – the spirit in which it was done, I don't think it was good. Now, when we talk about the spirit in which it was done, this is the why. So when you look at your own sluttiness, when you look at the hierarchy and you think like, who's a better slut than another person? It's the why for me. So I don't, you ever like get in a conversation with your girlfriends and you're like that fucking bitch, you, you fucking slut. When you mean it, you mostly mean, I think, in my bubble, we mostly are trying to say you were malicious and crass and uncaring. As an example, I think someone who sleeps with married people is slutty and shitty, right? You're just like, you're being slutty. What are you doing? Why are you going after married men? Why are you going after married women? Like, don't be a fucking, like, don't be that guy. Don't be that girl. But I'm sure in some bubbles, this might be reasonable I just don't want to fuck with those bubbles I don't want to be in those bubbles I don't want to be shamed by those bubbles and I don't want to be to the, held to the standard of those bubbles because in my worldview that is super slutty bitchy cunty behavior but again those words can mean different things in different contexts hey bitch cunt don't even go there you fucking cunt you're a fucking cunt and you know it you fucking piece of shit it's like different right same words different context different tone same with clothing same with sluttiness same with if you're a good stripper, bad stripper, good escort, bad escort, survival sex worker, luxury sex worker. Are you living and you're choosing sex work because it's awesome? Or are you surviving and you're choosing sex work or McDonald's or whatever because it's surviving? Because you're going to have different attitudes with these things. How many people burn out at their jobs because they chose a job they needed to survive? You're going to burn out. It's fine. It happens. Versus a job you love or a job you actually like don't mind at all, right? So for me, I don't mind doing OnlyFans. I like being naked. What's the, if you had to ask, if you had to do the problem solving with me and I said, what do you think is the worst part about being a sex worker? Do you really think it's the work? Or do you think it's how people treat you because you're a sex worker? Sometimes for some people, it's just the work. But I think for a majority of us and everything we do in our life, it's mostly other people that make our life harder. Because if we just did what we wanted to do, we'd probably be okay with it, give or take a couple of details. But then the shame from your bubble starts to filter in and you start to ask yourself, am I the problem? I don't think my sluttiness is a problem. A lot of people told me like, you're in your 30s, you're not going to get married. 
Um, you're on OnlyFans. No guy will want you. No woman would want a guy. Blah, blah, blah. No, blah, 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 blah. I just don't believe in these things. I don't believe in this no one will. Never happens. General, general, general. I want to believe that as individuals, we have this one life on earth. And because we have agency in a relationship with our, with our free will, we can move with purpose, move with intent that hopefully is well-meaning, but maybe in our life we haven't been perfect, myself included. So maybe we are not at that moment in our life, but we can get to a moment in our life where we're having conscientious and well-thought-out and well-considered interactions with other people, including ourselves. So now I'm dressed like this, okay? I was very aware that I was going to go downstairs. My brothers could be there and my ass is half hanging out. So I wore a towel. Not because I think there's anything wrong with being slutty, but because I believe in consent, I know my brothers would prefer not to see me half naked. Just like I prefer it when my brother does not wear his gray sweatpants because, man, gray sweatpants really make it clear you got a dick. Like, what is up with gray sweatpants? They are not lying when the internet says, like, gray sweatpants season. And I'm always like, bros, put on fucking different pants because like I don't also want to see my brother's dicks like that's what I'm saying at the end of the day yes we cannot we don't have to sexualize our siblings to also want to avoid seeing them naked obviously in sick situations where people have been sick and dying my siblings have we've seen each other naked like when I was dying from my hot chip challenge and I was on the floor vomiting and I was like dying my brother came in to help me and I was in a towel but I was like barely covered and he was like oh fuck okay and he like threw covers on me and helped me out of dignity to my suffering, he didn't also want, he knew I felt vulnerable. He knew that being naked around him made me feel vulnerable because like I'm sitting here vomiting, I'm disgusting. So out of a courtesy to me and him, he threw a cover on top of me and helped me. But he wouldn't deny me help if I was suffering just because I was naked. There's no crippling that's happening. So that's the key. If you are so crippled by your bias or your your thinking that you can't help someone in need because they don't fit your your criteria of modesty or something that could be a problem but that's not the relationship that's happening in my bubbles at least my bubbles aren't like denying people care because they're slutty that's not what's happening when things are good when things are healthy they're expressing boundaries around experiencing another person in the state of being they're presenting themselves in hi mom i really like seeing you if you don't mind when i'm visiting could you put on some clothes that might be a conversation one of us might have to have with our mothers. Not my mother, thank God. But I knew friends growing up who had very hippie parents. And they were not comfortable with their parents' nudity. Some people, I remember watching this MTV show as a kid on nudity and nudists. And he said, even though he grew up in a nudist community, he really didn't want to be naked around his parents and vice versa. I dated somebody who was second generation BDSM. And though he liked BDSM, his sister did not like BDSM and didn't want to be exposed to it like he was. So everyone's going to have a different relationship with their sexuality, with the way they see their sluttiness, with the way they have interactions with it. You could be at the BDSM dungeon for 10 years and never have sex with anyone, never even put sex into your BDSM them and people will see you and say you're slutty because they will see you in a dungeon with other naked people and even though you're not naked and you're not fucking because you were there it makes you one of them so we're not even judging people on their actions we're judging people on the vibe they're expressing to us right I think this is what is always going to be so interesting to me when we have these conversations, because for me, it, it all depends. You know when people notice that Hollywood stars are all doing BDSM stuff? It's like so clear they're all into BDSM. But when I do BDSM, it's like, ooh, the normies, the weird furries, the weird kinksters, the weird dom sub, the weird littles, they're all weird. But when Brianna does it or Beyonce does it or somebody comes to the, you know, uh, fashion shows with like all this BDSM gear, it's high fashion, it's cool, Vogue approves. Oh, look, all the people at the higher up have decided it's cool. It's like, yes, but it was always cool, even before you approved of it. <laughs> because the people who are in it like it. It's only cool if you're in it. Otherwise, it's just silly and LARPing and weird. Like when I look at like furries, it's like, oh, that's weird. I don't know why you would do that. In the same way, the furry might look at me and say, I don't know why you do BDSM. And I'm like, touche. I'm not, I don't have to judge you to know that you could be judging me, but it actually allows me to forgive myself more for my weird choices. When I look at other people and I say, I would not do that. I would not believe in a God and go to church, but they must be looking at me the same way. So that's kind of cool that we are at the end of the day, each other. We project onto each other. We're afraid for each other because we know that if we were in that situation, we'd be insane. Look, my life is my life. My sluttiness level is my own. My best friend, people she, people asked her, like, how many times have you been in the dungeon with Brittany? 
And she was like, never. Because she's a very conservative liberal woman. She would never think about being naked in public. Versus me, I'm like, woo! And I would still do it now. I'm going to probably do it when I'm 80 or 90. I can't wait to be an old lady on OnlyFans. Like, I love the idea of being an old lady on OnlyFans. I might not get there. Future Britney might decide something different. But that's going to be a different relationship to my bubble. My kids are going to go, hey, my, my mom is on OnlyFans and she's like 75. My grandkids are going to be like, grandma's on OnlyFans. If I'm there, if I'm doing that then. I'm open to it. I'm not opposed. But other people would be like, no, I would never be a slutty grandma. And I'm saying I'm open to it. I'm open to being a slutty grandma, very possibly. So that's the thing. What are you open to? puts you in a bubble what are you closed off to puts you in a bubble so when you're having that conversation with yourself about your body your sluttiness which slut are you which variation of of woman man they are you you have to think about what do you want and then what does your bubble want do you live in a bubble that is going to help you or do you live in a bubble that shouldn't know anything about you I live in a conservative bubble uh let's go Brandon signs all over the place I'm obviously not a trumper right I'm a BD summer and I'm an open queer person, but my neighbors don't know what I do for a living. They don't know anything about me. I'm very cautious about how I dress for the most part in front of them. I do push the line sometimes with my uh, work athleisure, like workout athleisure clothes. I have like this, um, like these outfits that I wear, but like, again, I'm very womanly in the body and I've got boobs. So people will look at me like my neighbor looked at me the other day when she saw me and she goes, Ooh, time to put on some clothes. You, you feel me? Like, some of my neighbors are blunt. Well, others of my neighbors are just like, okay. But, like, they don't bother me, so we're chill. If they bothered me, we'd be like, mm. But I do try to consider their feelings because they're older. And I try to think, like, don't dress. Like, I wouldn't go out like this to the mailbox. But I might go out in booty shorts and a tank top that kind of shows off my boobs. You know, it just depends. I try to, like, toe the line because we live in a society. So, again, everyone always asks me, like, how do you balance individuality with the community? Like this case by case, little by little. I try to pick and choose what I think is best for the moment, but I'm not perfect. So sometimes people get a little upset. When I go to my mom's house, I try to be very conscientious about what I'm wearing, what I'm uh, appearing as, how I even sit on the couch. Sometimes I just sit on my furniture sexy. Do you guys ever just sit on your furniture sexy? Like, do you ever just like, like you're gonna fall, like this chair here, I've like definitely like sat on this sexy. You know what I'm saying? And I try to think about that. Like I, in my own home, I think I even naturally, even when I'm home alone, I'm, I'm like kind of sexy. Like even if nobody is home and I'm just like, I have no lovers here. There's nothing like that. I feel a need to be sexy to feel sexy. So when I see Beyonce, Rihanna, Nikki, Cardi, Britney Spears, Christina being sexy, I don't think they're being sexy for men. I think they're being sexy for me, not as a gay woman, as a woman. They're saying you can feel this sexy too. And I want to feel that sexy girl. When I see them dancing, when I see Meg the Stallion, when I see these women doing what they're doing, I want to do these things because I want to feel that sexy. So when I see these women, I don't see them as my competition. I see them as somebody I admire for being in their 30s, being in their 20s, being in their after baby, before baby, being able to control their bodies and have a relationship with their body that I want with mine as well. <sighs> Especially as I get sicker with the autoimmune disorder, especially as I figure it out, I'm learning. It's getting better. It's up and down. I felt ugly all week. I just felt so shitty. I felt so, like, gross. I didn't, I didn't feel sexy. And even though my partner was telling me, like, you're beautiful, you literally look great, I was like, uh-huh. Like, I know that logically. But emotionally, like, I just couldn't look in the mirror and not feel like a piece of shit. And so the way that I know that I feel sexy is when I'm dressed like this. I know I'm feeling good today because my hair is done. I'm wearing this outfit and I feel good in it. Like I just some poses in front of the mirror today and I was like, okay, I feel good today. I feel sexy again. But I, I know I feel sexy because I'm wearing my sexy clothes. Like I'm a big lingerie fan. I have tons of lingerie. I love them. My sister used to tell me like, she's like, why do you have so much lingerie when you're single? And I'm like, for me, girl, for me. I like to dress up in lingerie around my house and like, Look in the mirror. That's probably why I like OnlyFans. Because those days when you feel really cute and really sexy, you got to post them somewhere. Let's all benefit from it. 
I feel sexy, you get something sexy, I make money, we all win. It's a win-win. But I only post on OnlyFans when I'm feeling sexy. So you guys know, anytime you see me on OnlyFans, I'm really feeling myself. Especially when I masturbate. I want everyone to know, your girl feeling herself. It's real, real. Versus when you're performatively sexy, you have to feel, no, you have to appear sexy even when you don't feel like it. So for me, when I hear people have really hard relationships with their bodies, their sexiness, their only fans, or maybe people feel like, I don't even know if, like Lav said this to me. She said, I don't know um, if I, she said something, I'm paraphrasing here, Lav, but she said something like, I don't even know if I like it. I have to know what I actually like now because I've been doing things other people have liked my whole life. I had the opposite thing. I just do what I like. So if you like it, it's because I assume you're reading the energy that I like it. Nobody... Most people don't want to rape you, right? Like most people don't want to be with partners that don't want to be there. So even when Steven Destiny reviewed my OnlyFans, he said the best photos for him were the ones where I was smiling and it looked like I really wanted to be there versus the ones where I was modeling and I was like, <laughs> like the <laughs> those are just the I feel good photos. But he, as the observer, wanted to feel like I wanted to be there because again, I don't think any of us really want a partner who genuinely doesn't want to be there. Or I don't know about you, but I don't get my rocks off knowing that a girl or a boy hates their job. Like, I don't want to be at the strip club and be like, you don't even look like you want to be here. I want you to want to be there. In order for them to want to be there, they have to want to be there. And I see that in these performers for the most part. I see that in Rihanna and I see that in Britney and I see that in people. But then sometimes I get a glimpse from some of them that I'm like, you don't even want to be there today, boo-boo. But like any other job, you push yourself forward, even if it's being pretty, and you force yourself to come to work, if that's your job. Obviously, I choose just to be poor <laughs> instead of going to work. But that's because I can. I can handle living a less wealthy lifestyle and a less successful lifestyle because I'm not chasing some dream like I think other people are. They're chasing like validation. I just need to be validated with my life by being married and having kids and having a family and getting, being good at my job. So when I'm slutty, I don't feel guilty because I'm not betraying my values. When I'm slutty, I don't feel shame because my bubble is mine. I made it. And it says be slutty. But don't think that your sluttiness doesn't have consequences. And don't think that your sluttiness needs to be accepted by all bubbles because it won't be. And don't think that your version of sluttiness might not be nice to other sluts. There are some of you guys out there that I don't fucking like. I don't like the way you expose kids to your bodies. I don't like the way you expose people to your nudity and your bluntness and your crudeness. I don't like the way that you treat people. But again, that's why we are just not friends. And it doesn't have to do with the fact that you take off your clothes. It has to do with the fact of why you take off your clothes or... Or the attitude you have when you're doing it. You feel me? Again, I, Brittany, have no issue with people being sex workers. I love it. I think you should do it. If you want to do it. But how you exist matters to me when dealing with me. Be honorable. Be dignified. Think about people's feelings. Think about consent. And then be honest with when you can't meet people where they are. So like I tell my mother, hey, if I come to your house, I'll be modest. I won't cuss. But when you come to my house, I will try my hardest to be modest, but there's no guarantee, especially if you're coming over during the week when I don't know you're coming over, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be dressed modest when you come over. So you cannot be shocked when you come into my space and then you might see me not being modest. Like that's really unfair for other people to project their version of modesty all the way into your own home. I try to be courteous to my people. I try to consider people's feelings, but it will stop somewhere. And I think instead of getting resentful and saying, well, you should just accept me and meet me where I am and accept that I'm a slut. I think I'm okay with people saying, I really like you, but when you come to my house, can you please dress modest? Of course, boo-boo, I totally get it. I get it. I do. I really do, right? I only get it because I know people are good. I see these people. They are good people. They just have limitations with their own bodies and modesty and sluttiness that I am going to judge them internally as a Britney and say, girl, I'm gay judging that you can't even have a nude painting in your house without freaking out. But also I get it. We all have limitations. Who am I to really judge your limitations? As long as you can meet me and say, this is on me instead of this is your fault. I'm sick of people pointing the fingers at sluts. Sluts are not the problem unless they are 
maliciously and unethically being slutty. So everybody should read The Ethical Slut. It's really good. But in general, sluttiness is not the problem. It's how that sluttiness interacts with non-sluttiness that creates the deviation and then the chaos. So we all have to be cognizant that whether you're super modest or super slutty, we are equally trying to suffocate each other or equally trying to meet each other where we're at without overstepping or causing malicious behavior. I don't want to stop you from living your life. I think lots of people do better modestly and some people do better being slutty. I am more on the slutty side, but even compared to some of my other friends, I'm like more modest. Compared to my modest, modest friends, I'm super slutty or like less slutty. Again, we're just trying to figure out where we belong. So when you see the hierarchy of sluttiness that exists, obviously, and people are judging each other for it, know that that's normal and that's okay. Just please consider that you could gay judge instead of real judge. Maybe I could gay judge you instead of real judging you. But if you're going to real judge, it doesn't even matter because it's only in your neuroses. It's only in your head that you think you real judging matters. You haven't discovered anything new. You are not the arbiter of truth. You have not figured out anything more than anyone else has. You're just also projecting onto other people your idea of objective morality, which I don't even think really exists. So have fun with that. With that said, I hope this made sense. I hope this is going to be an interesting podcast. I really liked the conversation that me and this girl had because it is hard when you're in these bubbles. There's obviously a hierarchy. There's obviously a, oh, you're like a suicide girl, but you're not an OnlyFans girl. Oh, I'm on OnlyFans, but I would never be on Suicide Girls. Oh, I like do cam on Chatterbait, but I would never do escorting. Oh, I'm an escort, but I would never do. Yes, you would never do. But that doesn't have, that has nothing to do with what other people would do. I would never be a hoe to a pimp, ever, period. But some people in some bubbles, this is their ideal. So let them have their ideal and mind your own business, if you can. If you can. That is the greatest form of discipline that I think humans will need to learn this next cycle over, evolutionarily speaking, is maybe we could gain a skill where we learn to mind our own fucking business. But probably not because, you know, we like to be in it, you know, and even this video here, I know I've already said things that people are going to be like, I have opinions about that. Give me your opinions, girls. Be be critical. Give me your opinions. Look, I don't exist in your bubbles. I only exist in the ones that I know of and the ones that I'm in. But we all have flaws. There is no objectively good bubble. I do not believe that anyone lives outside of a bubble. I do not believe even if you're extra, extra introspective that you can consistently live outside the micro. I think you just have moments in and out of it. But I also think like living in the present is very exhausting and it doesn't allow you to like plan for the future, consider the past. It allows you the luxury of just enjoying the moment, which is beautiful. But it's really difficult in a world where you need to plan sort of to do that consistently without it ruining your trajectory. So again, don't be so blinded by even the path of introspection that you deny yourself to live in the moment of the self and in the future, in the, for the future of the self. Does that make sense? So don't forget that even though you feel strongly right now about your beliefs, that they could change. And don't forget that it's okay not to change, that you can remain in your beliefs. I do I cannot, I, I feel like I got to say this again in a different way, but I probably should just end it here. But I'm going to try one more time. No matter how you do things, you are still just doing it because this is what you need to do. Ultimately, you should always be introspective and extrospection, extrospective. Ask yourself the question, how is, how am I relating to existing, which is me and myself? And then how is the existing really existing relating to the existence that I am sharing with the world. Even now, I am nervous because I'm like, what do I have to edit out? Did I say anything crazy? I don't think I did. I think I said everything pretty clearly. Who's going to misunderstand me? Oh my God, what bubble's going to hear me? Oh crap, am I going to piss off black Americans? Am I going to piss off the sluts? Am I going to piss off all the like escorts? Like I'm sitting here like, am I going to piss off white people? Am I going to piss off my conservative family? Am I going to piss off, piss off, piss off? They are going to be upset, Brittany. It's okay. You said your piece. You mean it nicely. You don't have a malicious bone in your body in relation to this. So hopefully they hear you and they hear what you're trying to say, but maybe they won't. That's okay. Humans are going to human. Try your best. Clarify next time. Take a deep breath. No one's going to remember us in five years, (laughs) let alone a hundred. It's okay. Take a deep breath. 
it's like I have all this anxiety too, even having this conversation. I know there are people out there who are going to be like, oh, she's in denial. She's coping. She's cognitive dissonance. Maybe. But we won't know unless we have the conversation. So if I'm in denial, let me know. If you feel like I'm on point, let me know. If you feel like you were offended, let me know. Let's just have the conversation. Yeah? All right. Um, that's it. I think that's, fuck, I think that's it. Yeah. Damn. Okay, outfit check. Cute, right? Cute. I got it off a um, fast fashion thing I saw on the line on the internet. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy that and see. I also have another one from this company that's really, really cute. And I'm going to post it on OF. So this week, look forward to OF content. Um, just a reminder that I'll be gone the last week of September and first week of October. So please plan your October calls around that with that knowledge. And I think that's it. Okay, I'm going to go. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And I will see you next podcast. Bye. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool